In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. And your spirit. And welcome everybody. And a very, very happy feast to you all. Uh, today we celebrate a Pentecost. And we see the beautiful display um, prepared for us for Pentecost by Teresa and Christina Gregory, and Lavina, and Father Thyrium. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. And the Spirit hovering uh, over the earth, breathing life uh, into the earth. This year, as we celebrate Pentecost, perhaps it is a bit like the experience of the early church. The disciples are gathered with Mary in the upper room, and then they hear something. The whole room seemed to shake and they became so aware of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that this Easter, this Pentecost, will truly be a time of the Spirit for us, that we will know the action of the Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our families, that the Spirit will make His presence felt within us and that we will be deeply consoled and filled with the gifts of love and peace and a desire to share our life with others. And today we offer this Mass For V.J. Joseph, for Jacob Landis, and Benson and Robert Parolin on their anniversaries, and also for Philomena Ferdinand on her anniversary. And we pray also for Maria Marquis, 
Myra Speed, Jesudasen Santiago, Paulo Suarez, Byron Paul, Panabin Patel, and Mary Morgan, who have died recently. And we pray also for all those who have died in the coronavirus in nursing homes in South Hall. Nursing homes, the parish visits in a very regular way. So we pray for all those who have lost their lives in this terrible virus. We pray for all those who care for them. We pray for all those who grieve. And we pray also for Jerry Colley, who is sick. Let's call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room. When suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house, in which they were sitting, and something appeared to them 
that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now, there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one Spirit, we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given to us all to drink. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, Lord of light, from your clear celestial height, your pure beaming radiance give. 
Come, O Father of the poor, come with treasures that endure. Come, O light of all that live. You of all consolers best, you the soul's delightful guest, Sweet, refreshing peace bestow. You in work are comfort sweet, Pleasant coolness in the heat, Solace in the midst of woe. Light immortal, light divine, Show your love to humankind, And are in most being If you take your grace away, nothing pure in us will stay. All our good is turned to ill. Ill our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gifts descend. Give us comfort when we die, give us life with you on high, give us joys that never end. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have a message from Carl.
Cardinal Vincent. My brothers and sisters, I'm very glad to have this opportunity to speak with you directly. I want to do so in order to reflect on these moments that we're living through, but especially in the context of the Feast of Pentecost. I'm making this message, this video, on the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, the day in which we live through that moment when Jesus' bodily presence among his disciples came to an end. And they were told to await the coming of a gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we have this image of them gathered in the upper room, awaiting this gift. And when that gift comes, it creates a whole new energy. The Holy Spirit fills them with the energy of God and the mission of the church, as it were, bursts out of the upper room. Jesus had said he would breathe on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when it comes, it removes fear, it deepens joy, and it deepens this desire to let others know of the message of Jesus, of what he brings to us in our lives, the love, the compassion, and the service that he inspires within us. Now, there are little parallels with what we're living through now. In a sense, I could say we're living through an experience of being closed in in the upper room. Uh, we don't go out so much. We certainly at this point can't gather in our churches, but we do gather faithfully together at home to do exactly what those first disciples with Mary were doing. They gathered in prayer, they ate together, and they obeyed the Lord. They waited for the coming of this gift. We have a sense of that waiting too, waiting when we can move more freely in society, when we can gather. And therefore, of course, what we're really looking forward to as well is gathering again in our churches, being able to visit the church just to pray, and then wanting to gather again for Mass as best we can when it's safe. But there's a much deeper theme I would like to come to as well. And that is the experience that we have of being in the presence of the Lord and as it were, breathing in all that he wants to give to us and then being sent out to breathe out his mission, his gifts, all that he asks of us to do. And this breathing in and breathing out is the very rhythm of Christian life. And so it happens when we're at the Eucharist. We, as it were, receive the very life of God, the breath, the, the, the flesh of Jesus. And it's given to us so that when we leave that gathering, it can flow out of us. It can flow out as compassion, as service to the poor, all those ways in which we try to express our faith. And you know, what I really hope is that this Pentecost will deepen both aspects of the life of the church as I've just tried to explain them. That as we go through this strange experience, maybe we're learning more about the ways in which we breathe in deeply the gifts of God. We're learning more about how to do that at home, how to do that in terms of new media, how to do that in encouraging each other. And also that we can strengthen the way in which we breathe out. I'm so grateful to so many parishes, so many of you who are providing service for those who are poor and needy. Many parishes around the diocese are providing hundreds of meals, some of them every single day. And that's a real gift that flows from all that we have received from the Lord. So as we move forward, and as we make the preparations which we have to make for the opening of our churches, we need to be drawing together all that we have learned over these weeks, 
about nurturing faith between us at home and in new ways within a parish. And we learn to, we need to garner, bring together all that we have learned about service and about the generosity in people's hearts and minds as they want to serve the Lord. So as we approach Pentecost, let's have a fervent, focused prayer for the coming of the Holy Spirit afresh within us, in our families, our parishes, and in this family of the Diocese of Aho. I hope that on Saturday evening next, at the Vigil of Pentecost, you will choose to spend a bit of time in prayer. There will be things to help you if you want to use them. There'll be, I think, a meditation on the diocesan website using the richness of Christian art. But there's many other ways as well of spending a bit of time, precious time, in prayer for the coming of the Holy Spirit on the vigil of that great feast. Please do so. Please pray for me. And we say very simply, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Amen. And let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Holy Spirit of love, as we remember the way in which at Pentecost you transformed the lives of the apostles, we come before you with our hearts and our prayers, yearning for you to hear our deepest longings and fill us with your peace. We pray that the Holy Spirit of wisdom will guide Pope Francis and all religious leaders as they try to give hope and courage to a world which must rebuild communities emerging from the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Spirit of peace will direct governments and businesses to comfort and reassure people who are filled with uncertainty and anxiety about the future and security of their families and employment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Spirit of hope will fill the hearts of everyone affected by Cyclone Amphan, that those who have lost homes, livelihoods, or someone they loved will find the courage and comfort that they need at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Spirit of comfort will touch the hearts of all those who experienced loss during the period of COVID-19 lockdown, whether it takes the form of bereavement, loneliness, or job insecurity. May people find hope, encouragement, and support as they rebuild their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Spirit, who sent out the apostles to all corners of the earth, will brighten the darkness in people's hearts and fill them with the joy of knowing God's presence in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Spirit of love will accompany us and everyone whom we know and love 
in all that we say, think and do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Jerry Colley and all those who are sick and for all those whose names are written in the parish book of the sick. May they experience the healing touch and comforting love of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Maria Marcus, Myra Speed, J. Sudasan Sandiago, Paula Soros, Byron Paul, Paniban Patel, Mary Morgan, and all those who have died recently, and for V.J. Joseph, Philomena Ferdinand, Jacob Landis, Benson and Robert Parillon, and all those whose adversaries are come out at this time, that the Lord may grant them a place of eternal happiness, light and peace in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We now pray for our own needs and each other. We ask Mary to join us in our prayer. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit of light, come to us, stay with us, guide us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the Church came to birth opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Pasco joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending theme of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. For therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Vincent, our bishop, and all the clergy. O 
Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. on this uh, beautiful feast day. Invite the Holy Spirit to be active within you, that you may feast on the Lord Jesus in your heart and be in very deep communion with him. Please join me in the prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Breaking through.
let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the last Sunday in May, uh, the month of Mary, and today there is uh, a national rosary rally all round England and Wales and Scotland, and the faithful in each diocese are invited to say the rosary uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Sunday, and the faithful of Westminster are invited to uh, recite the rosary at 5 p.m. on the afternoon of Pentecost Sunday, to recite the rosary at 5 p.m. on the afternoon of Pentecost Sunday, uh, praying for a relief from the COVID-19 virus. And a very, very happy feast to you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Queen of 